So the growth engineers is all about strategy and giving you tools that you can use to implement in your business to grow and be successful. But when we think about marketing, we think about content and buyer's journey and selling and all of these pieces and parts together, and it becomes overwhelming. So in this week's episode of The Growth Engineers, we're going to talk about a strategy that pulls all of these things together so you can really engage with your audience so they ultimately just show up and hopefully just buy. So what is that strategy? What is it at all? Stay tuned for this episode and we're going to get into it. Atiba, this is going to be an awesome one. I say yeah, that buddy. every week. You say that every week because we have great stuff, I think. So what are we talking about here? What is the strategy that we're going to be digging into today? Yeah. And so we're going to be talking about the art of storytelling. Okay. And how storytelling really works and helps in your content strategy, whether it's written or video. You know, I love video, right? But most importantly, how it helps your ideal customer along the journey with you. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Awesome. So where, where are we going to start? Where well, do you want to kick this off? Let, let's define story, okay? Because so very often when you hear story, we think about once upon a time, <laughs> right? In a land far, far away. And that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about fairy tale story. And we're not talking about storytelling in, in that sense. But what we are talking about is understanding the structure of story. And the structure of story is very, very important because we have to identify who the different characters are and know that those characters exist in the journey that you're doing with every single client. That's their story with you. And those characters exist. So let's define the characters. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. The first one that everybody knows is the hero. There's got to be a hero, the person who wins at the end. Yep. Right? Comes out victorious. We've got a hero. Now, if there's a hero, there's also a villain or a problem or an issue or something that they're overcoming. There's a villain. Okay? And then there's also a guide. Think about every movie you've watched. The hero of that story had someone who was in their ear who helped them understand the plan that they needed to take in order to get to victory. Okay? There's that guide. So let me ask you a question. In your business, which one are you? <laughs> now, let me ask an even better question. And I want you to be really, really, really honest here. And possibly even pause Dean and I right now and go and objectively look at your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your website. And let me ask this question. Your marketing. What does your marketing say you are? Which character does your marketing say you are? Does your website start off with, what we do is, <laughs> we are the best? If so, you're presenting yourself as the hero. But are you the hero? Are you the hero? You see, when we look at storytelling and marketing, when we look at storytelling and business, when we look at the story journey that your client takes with you, they're the ones who win at the end. And if they win at the end, they've got to be the hero. So if they're the hero, who are we, <laughs> Dean? Are we the villain or are we the guy? What do you think? Well, I hope we're not the villain. <laughs> God knows we hope we're not the villain. So yeah, obviously we are the guide, but we don't always show up 
as the guide. Yes, and that's that objective view of what your marketing looks like right now. But you see, that's the key. You are the guide. You are the guide. Your job is to guide the customer. Now, we've talked about this already, consultative versus collaborative selling. We've got other videos we're talking about. We're just giving you a different view at looking at the same thing. Okay? What we're saying here is you are the guide. And as the guide, it's your job to say, hey, I see that villain, that problem you have, which, by the way, is what your business solves. Your business solves, your product or service solves that problem, helps them defeat that villain. Okay? I have a plan that can help you, hero, once you do the plan or allow us to do the plan for you, depending on your model, right. to defeat that villain and come out victorious. Hollywood has made hundreds of billions using this model. Yeah. You know, you sit in on a movie that's two hours, two and a half hours, like, holy cow, that's going to be long, and it flies by because you become part of that story. You're shoulder to shoulder with the hero. Yeah. Right? The model works. Story brand, you just Google story brand, guys. You'll find so many resources out there. You'll see it. Now we understand the framework. How do we actually do it? Ativa, that's all right. I get it. I want to be the guide. I want the client to be the hero. We know the villain is the challenge, the issue, the, the barrier. Now, what do I do? I, I don't know how to yeah. what do, I do next. But, but even before we get there, let me touch on one last thing really, really, really okay. quickly, Dean. Yeah. And that is ever consider what makes a movie a bad movie? Ever consider what makes you stop watching a movie? And it's often because within the first five to 10 minutes, if you can't dif- differentiate who the hero is, who the guide is, what the, the problem is that they're overcoming, you're bored. You don't relate. Yeah, you're not following. Yeah, right. And so in your storytelling, it's got to be really clear as well. And so often, it's not in what we do. Okay? So how do we get there? How do we get to that clarity? How do we get to that definition? Okay? I want you to, 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 to also pay attention to another video that we did recently talking about SEO. And I talked about the keys to traffic in that video. And we started with the obsession of audience. That's the obsession with the hero. And so if you want to understand how to get there, that's the first part of it is the obsession with the hero. Understanding the before state of the hero and the after state of the hero. Where are they trying to go? What is that delta? Because then we define the journey. Okay, we define the journey. And so now if I understand where their before state is, if I'm obsessed enough with my audience that I understand where they are today and I understand where they're trying to go. There's a principle we use in our company and it's called, and it's kind of weirdly named, but it's called think steps, not programs. Because so often we think in programs, oh, I'm going to do an, an ad campaign. Oh, I'm going to do with this. Or, oh, I'm going to do with that, right? We don't think that. We think about steps. You, and the steps that you think about is you start with that obsession with the audience of where they are today and ask yourself, based on their pain points, based on their current understanding, what's the first thing that they need to understand next? In order to take the first step, what needs to be true for them? What needs to be true? What do they need to know? What do they need to understand? Okay, I understand what that first thing is. All right, now, as the guide, how am I going to help them understand that? What's the plan I'm going to put in place? That plan helps you define the content that you create. Yeah, yeah. And how you present it. Go ahead. I'll add one other component to that I think is really important is understanding their beliefs. Yes. Because if you understand their beliefs, you know, do you have to overcome a false belief or do you need to reinforce the possible, right? So many times in an industry, people are trying to solve the same problem with the same old dogma, the same old approaches. And if you sell to that, 
you market to that and you message to that, you, you look lose. like everybody else. You lose. Your commodity. So you, yeah, yeah. So if you understand that belief, part of what you can do is you can do a kind of a full reversal in your content. So the guide changes what we believe is possible and true. And yes. that's, that's one of the foundations of how you frame your message. And so that belief, yes. I think, is so important. And we stack those, right? Yeah. Because they're little beliefs that lead to bigger beliefs. They're little problems that lead to bigger problems. They're little pains that lead to bigger pains. And we stack them. And, and so that's, that is getting back to exactly, Dean, right? And so you look at it in all those different areas when we talk about the psychographics, right? Yeah. And all the different areas of psychographics of your ideal customer. And you, you start to say, where are they? And what is the next step? Let's help them take that next step in belief, in, the, in this area, that area, the other area. And that's the story that we start to tell. Yeah. Okay. And we become the guide. And you see, the, the thing about, and this is one of the beauties. This is one of the absolute beauties. And people miss this in, in understanding the lead magnet culture. Because we think about the lead magnet culture as, oh, I'm trying to get a lead. I just want to get your email address so I can market to you later. But the lead magnet culture came out of the storytelling culture of being the guide. I was going to take something out of my big framework that was supposed to be really good and make it the lead magnet because it was going to get you a result. Because when you got that result, we got that tiny result. You took that first step. As the hero, you felt good. Woohoo! <laughs> and then you come back to the guide and say, what's the next step? And that's the relationship we want to build. That's the collaborative Nate, relationship. Okay? And that's how we build in storytelling into our content and into our marketing. That's how we look at it. Now, why does this work so well? And Dean hit on it a little while ago. You'll go to a movie and sit for an hour and a half and not look at your phone. When else in your life do you not look at your phone for an hour and a half when you're consciously awake was, and I not in the hospital? Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like it doesn't happen. Your phone's always in there. You can all and, and you always <laughs> heck. You even turn your phone off and the notifications off in a movie. Why? Not just because they, they told you to, but because you actually don't want to be distracted from the story. Because nothing holds our attention like story. So you want to hold the attention of your ideal customer? Create story in your marketing. Those tiny steps help them move, let them be the hero, continue being the guide, and help them across that bridge from their before state to their ideal after state. That's yep. what you're trying to do. Yep, yep, that's awesome. And, and the movie analogy just like works, right? It works for oh, two yeah. reasons, because of the story, but also because of the medium, right? So we can deliver story in a lot of ways. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what we believe is one of the most effective ways to deliver story. Video. It's gotta be video, right? It's gotta be video. It's got to be. And, you know, I had somebody say this to me a couple of days ago, and I thought it was fascinating the way she phrased this, and it was so very true. When someone's your best friend or someone you've known for a while and you have a good relationship with, you can send text messages um, between the two of you, call you at five. And no one takes any offense to it, right? Holla at you later. <laughs> nobody takes any offense to it because there's relationship and trust there. And yeah. so that relationship and trust sets context for the, the message. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. When someone sits and reads your blog, they don't know you. And so let's say you're real sarcastic and that comes across in your writing they may read sarcastic as being a jerk. Yeah. Not as trying to be funny. They may read your 
overly serious as not saying that this is a serious point that we need to convey, but that you're just a complete stick in the mud yep. because they don't know you. However, on video, you can feel energy through video. You can convey energy through video. Because if I say you can convey energy through video versus you can convey energy through video, you get a completely different feeling between the two of them. Mm -hmm. On paper, it's just some words. Maybe I bolded it. Maybe <laughs> I underlined it. But that's about as far as like, oh, italics. <laughs> that's about as far as I can go. But here I can give you so much more. And you see, and that's key and, and crucial because customers today want to connect with real people. They do. Go back and watch our collaborative selling versus consultative selling. We talk about it all day long there. It's so valuable. And the other thing is there's a level of expectation, right? We're on these things 24 seven with most of the content we consume on the daily, on the minute by minute is video content. Oh yeah. It's video. It may be a 60 second TikTok. It's video. Our expectation is to connect eyeball to eyeball with another human. Yeah. It doesn't devalue some of the written content that's out there, but you've got to get out of the noise. You've got to elevate your brand and video is going to be the way to do that. It Absolutely. has to be the core of everything you do in terms of delivery. Video is underutilized. We think video, we think marketing, right? Yeah. We kind of connect those two. Video is so underutilized and storytelling is so underutilized in selling. I was waiting for you to say that. In selling, man, I tell you, I see so much opportunity for people there. So let me, can I give you a case study on that real quick? Sure. So we have a client and we've done their marketing for quite some time. And obviously we do a lot of video for them. And they actually were a client from back in the day when we used to only do written marketing before we started doing video. We've transitioned. And so we've done both for them over time. Either way, we drive lots of leads for them every single month, right? And we got to a place with them where they were like, hey, we're getting tons of leads, but we're not converting them yeah. well enough, right? We're not converting. And that's not really totally our bag, but because they've been our client for so long, we decided to look into it with them. And we know enough in that en environment. And so one of the things that we did was we helped them change their opt-in form and ask what categories of services you want information on. Okay. And so now when someone signs up, they get a welcome email series because their sales cycle for what they're selling is about nine months from okay. the time when someone opts in. Okay. It's a big product that they're selling. Right. And that's fine. And so obviously there's communication that has to happen to keep them. The story has to keep going. <laughs> right. And so there was the welcome email series, but then we took their desires and what categories they said they wanted. And we turned those into emails with videos that layered in between the welcome series. Now that's going out over a 21 day period. And in that time, they have their initial call with one of the salespeople. The salespeople then have a conversation with them and listen for other pain points that they're dealing with. And then in their CRM, go in and check this pain point, this pain point, this pain point, which then lines them up to get emails based on those pain points over a series of time. And those emails all have videos in them. Yep. Yep. And what it does is the email series is now taking the place of that phone call to explain this thing from the salesperson. And so when they have that next appointment, the people are calling back and they're way more educated and way further along. Again, being the guide. Yeah. Right? They told us what we wanted. We're giving them the blueprint of how it works and how they can be victorious. Yeah. That's awesome. There's so much great stuff in there, guys. Video in 
a systematic, repeatable fashion like you describe is so powerful. Yeah. And then you can also layer in customized videos, one-on-one oh, yeah. one with your prospect, the nurturing, the follow-ups, the reinforcing of points that you had on the last call with the prospect. Loom is an easy tool to use for that, right? You, yeah. you can always see when somebody's reviewed that video. So yes, yeah. so much good stuff there, man. And I'm looking for something here, Dean, because we have a friend in common who does this better than most people. With, when you talked about Loom. Michael um, DeLone? Yes, Michael. <laughs> That's who I was looking for. You knew exactly who I was looking for. Yep. Michael, Michael and Loom, in my mind, is synonymous. I, I think Michael owns Loom. <laughs> and Michael, actually, if you listen to this, we love you. Okay? Yeah, we do. But you can't have a meeting. You can't have a conversation, a five-minute conversation. You can have a five-minute conversation with Michael, and three minutes after that conversation, you will get a minute and a half Loom video thanking you for the five minutes. Yep. And you know what? We said Loom, and we both thought about the same person. Talk about yep. mindshare, right? Yep. So right. if you get that same mindshare with your product, your brand, your market, the problem you solve, it's a game changer, and video is a key to that. Absolutely. We could spend another hour talking about video and storytelling, to you, but I'm able to do another follow-up episode on this because there's so much more to cover. But for this episode, what do you want to leave the audience with? What's their takeaway? You know, the, the, the takeaway here for you has to be, and, and it's you're going to say, but you didn't actually say this all along, but this was the underlying undertone of everything that we've said. And we've said this in several videos. If you really don't understand your customer, you can't achieve any of this. Mm -hmm. There is literally nothing more important right now in your business than you being obsessed with your customer. You want to grow. That's why you're listening to us. You want to engineer growth. That's why you're listening to us. There is no way you can do that without an obsession of your customer. Period. Dot. That's where you got to start. Awesome. Well, and there's a tool that we know that's available that can help you with that. Go connect with the Tiba. Ask him yep. about his AI tool. That will be a play, a tool to start you off but there's lots of great resources out there. So that's it. That's this episode of The Growth Engineers. It's great seeing everybody again this week, and we will talk to you again very soon. Take care. Bye, everybody.